In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural wavy marble material. And after I show you how to create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom node group so you can easily customize the material. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material. Then we just have the noise scale and we just have the wavy scale. And then we have the colors for this marble. So we have color one and we also have color two and then also color three. Then we have the color hue, so you can easily just drag this value. If you want to change the hue, you could make it like a blue marble or kind of a red marble. Then we also have the waves detail, so you can turn the detail level up and down of the waves. Also the waves distortion, so this will make it really distorted. And then also the waves roughness, and this is kind of like another detail value. Then we have the roughness of the material, if you want to make really shiny marble or more rough. And then we have the bump strength, so I have this at a very small number because I want the marble to look really shiny, but you could make it more rough if you want to. And then we finally have the subsurface scattering. So marble actually has a small amount of subsurface scattering to allow a little bit of light to go through. So I can turn up the subsurface scattering and you can see here on this cat statue, there's just a little bit of subsurface and there's a little bit of light going through kind of the thinner parts like the cat's ears. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, you can get that on my government store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials, and they're all pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And every time I create another 10 procedural materials, I update the material pack with all of the new materials. So I've just updated the Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack with all of these new materials, so all of my existing customers can re-download the product files to get the new updates with the new materials. Materials. And if you'd just like to purchase these 10 most recent procedural materials I've made, then you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Pack number 19, which come with just these new materials. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist here on YouTube. The links are all in the description. So real quick, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set it up the same way that I have. So I wanted to preview the material on a sphere, so I went to the Add menu, I went to Mesh, and I added an Icosphere, and then right behind me on the Add Icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up to 6, so it is nice and smooth and round, and then I used the Object Context menu to shade the object smooth, and then I want to scale this down so it's closer to the real-life scale in Blender, because the default objects are a bit larger than an average human, so this is a really big sphere, so I'm going to scale this object down by 0.2 and then I'll press Control A and apply the scale so that's the default size of the object. Now I also wanted to see how this marble material would look like on a statue, so I added in this cat statue, and this is a photo scan that I downloaded from Sketchfab. So if you'd like to download the same model to use it as a material preview, then I will have the links in the description to the model on Sketchfab if you'd like to download it. Then I also added this camera here and I just pointed the camera at the object. And if you select the camera and then go over here to the side panel and go to the object data properties of the camera, I turned the focal length up to 80 just because I wanted to kind of zoom in a bit and make it look a bit more flat because I like that better. And then also here on the render properties, I am going for realism, so I am going to be using the Cycles rendering engine. But if you wanted to, you could also make the material in Eevee. Here's the material in Blender Eevee, so you can do this in Cycles or Eevee, but I'll be using Cycles for more realism. So after changing the render engine over to Cycles, I also added some different different area lights. So I added these three area lights right here. So I have one kind of on the back to kind of have a rim light. Then I have this one up here, which is going to add a nice light to the top of the objects. And then I have this main light right here, which is adding a lot of brightness to the side of the object. Now also to get some realistic lighting and reflections in the 3D scene, I also went over here to the world properties and I added this Aerodynamics Workshop 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com and the link will be in the description if you'd like to download it. So what you can do is click on the yellow dot here next to color, you can choose environment texture, and then you can click on the open button and just add in the downloaded HDRI. And I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version on Polyhaven. And then I didn't want 
want it to be super bright, so I turned the strength down to a 0.4. Now also, let's go here to the render properties, and here in the color management, I set the view transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast to make everything more contrasted and saturated. And also, if you want to make the background transparent, you can go to the film tab and you can just click on the transparent button. So you can click over here to go to the shader editor, and I'm going to close this side panel and make this smaller. So I have the 3D viewport right over here, and I'm in the rendered mode and in the camera view, and then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll click on new to add a new material, and I can rename this to wavy marble. And then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and over here on the add-ons tab, if you go to the search, you can search for node, and you can just check mark the node wrangler add-on so it's built into Blender, and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So let's close the user preferences. So I want to start off by adding two different textures, and that's going to be a noise and a wave texture. So I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop it here. We can also go to the add menu and search for a wave texture and drop it down here. And these are the two main textures which will be used to create the material. Now also with the noise texture selected, I'm going to press Control T, and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates are going to place the textures on the object more evenly. So let's put the object object into the vector. And I can control shift and select the noise texture preview it. And by holding down the control and shift key and selecting different nodes, that is using the node wrangler and it's going to preview the node on the object. Let's also take the vector of the mapping and put that into the vector of the wave texture. So let's now change some of the settings of the noise texture. So I'm gonna turn the scale to two. I'm also gonna turn the detail to the max of 15, and I also want it to be super detailed, so I'll turn the roughness all the way up to one. Also, I didn't add the material onto this object here, so I'm gonna select this object, and I will click and drag and drop the material onto this object so they both have the same material. All right, let's control shift and select the wave texture and I wanna change some of these settings as well. So on the X here, I'm gonna change it to Z instead so they're going back and forth. I'm gonna turn the scale to two. I'll turn the distortion up quite a bit to seven and then I want it to be very detailed. So I'll turn the detail to the max of 15 and the detail roughness I'll turn to a 0.75. So it is more detailed. Now, if I control shift and select the noise texture, I want to kind of squish the noise texture down so it is kind of going along the same directions as the waves are. So I'm going to select this mapping node. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here so it's in between the noise and the other mapping. So I can use this mapping to squish down the texture. So on the Z value, I'm going to turn this to 5, and that's going to squish it down. So you can now see the noise texture is kind of squished, and it kind of has more of a lines there. It is a little bit hard to see, but if I drag this Z value down, you can kind of see what it's doing. But what I now want to do is make it more contrasty so it's easier to see. So I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for a color ramp. We'll put the color ramp here after the noise texture. So now I can drag both of these colors together, and that's going to make it more contrasty. So I'll drag the white tab here and the black tab kind of to about there. That looks pretty good. And then I want to duplicate this to make another one, which we're going to use later. So I'll press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the node, but keep the wires plugged up. And then this one here, I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to drag this over here. If I Control Shift and select it to preview it, I'm going to drag the black tab over and the white tab back a bit. So this one is going to be kind of a little bit lighter, but then this one will be a bit darker. So we're going to use those later to create the material. Now I also want to make the wave texture more contrasty, and I want to add more waves in between the waves. So we're going to select this color ramp. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it. We can drop it down here, and the wave texture color can go into the factor, and I'll Control Shift and select the color ramp to preview it. So let's change the values. So I'm first going to put the white tab all the way over here, and I'm going to hold down the Control key and click here to add another one. So we have two white ones on this side, and I'll bring them pretty close. Then I'll drag the black tab kind of to about here, and I'll hold down the control key and click to add another tab there. And then I want to add some more white ones, so I'll hold down the control key and click here in between these two ones, and that way it'll add a super white one. And we can drag this over here, and then you can click here to add another one, and you can drag this over. So basically what we're doing by changing it between white and then black and then white and then black, it's going to make lots of waves in between those waves. So we're adding a lot more detail to the waves. Let's also hold down the control key and click again, and I can drag this over here, and control click again, 
and then control click again it will bring this over and we're gonna control click in here where this white one is and drag over so now we have two white ones then we have a black one and then we have another black one and then we have some more white ones here and you can see when I drag this around you can see what part of the texture it's controlling then I have two more black ones and then a white one and a black one so you can see it starts out as white then it gets black and then white and black and white and so there's some really cool texture variation there because we're making it super contrasty and going back and forth between white and black. Now I want this wavy marble to also have some noise, so we're now gonna be mixing these two textures together. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select both of these two bottom color ramps. And I'll now press control zero, and control zero is gonna add the mix color node, and I can drag it over here, and it's gonna mix them both together. Now on this mix here, I want that to be going into color A, but this color ramp here, which is the waves, that's gonna go into the factor. And then on this mix type here, I just want to change it to lighten instead. So we'll change it to lighten so it adds the light values. And here on color B, if I make this darker, it's going to show more the noise. But then if I turn this up, because it's adding the light values, it's going to add the light values of where the wave texture is. So if I control shift and select the color up here, these white values are going to be added on top of the noise. So you can see there's a big white spot there and kind of over there. So if I control shift and select the lighten they're just going to be those white waves above the noise texture so now it looks noisy in between where the dark areas are and then it's going to be white where the waves are so that's looking much more interesting so now i want to make the colors so i'm going to go to the add menu and we're just going to search for another mix color and we can drop this here after the lighten and we can put the lighten result into the factor so now the light and black values are going to control what parts are going to be color a and what parts are going to be color b so for color A, I'm going to make this kind of like a light brown color, something like that. And for color B, this is going to be kind of like a gray color. And if you want to use the same exact colors I'm using, for color A, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 6F, 4F, 40. And then for color B, the hex value for this one is C7, C5, C4. So this is the two main colors, but then I'm also going to use this color ramp here to add some more noise, and we're going to add another color. So we'll click on this mix here, I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, we can drop it here, and the mix result, this is going to go into color A. So now we can take this color ramp here, and this is going to go into the factor to determine what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So I'll control shift and select the mix to preview it. And then here on color B, this one is going to be that other color. So I can make this kind of like an orangey brownish color. And if you want to use the same exact color I'm using, the hex value for color B is going to be 9E713F. So now this mix result can go into the base color, and I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now to make it look much more like marble, we need to make it more shiny. So I'm going to turn this roughness here to a 0.15 so it is much more shiny. And then also let's add the subsurface. So this subsurface here, we can open this up. And I'm going to turn the weight to 0.5. So now you can kind of see right there on the cat's ear, there's just a little bit of subsurface. And then another thing I want to do is add the hue saturation value so we can easily adjust the hue. So let's go to the add menu. I can search for the hue saturation value and we'll put this between the mix color and the principled shader. So now we have this hue here, and so if I drag this around, that's going to change the color hue. You also have the saturation and the value if you want to change that, but this hue here will change the colors. So we'll be using this later in the custom nude group. Now I also want to add just a tiny little bit of bump, but want to be very subtle. So let's click on this noise texture, and I'm going to press Control shift d So Control shift d will duplicate the node, but keep the wire plugged up. Now why I'm duplicating it is because I don't want it to be that rough, because if it's that rough, the detail is going to be so small, it'll be kind of hard to see. So for this noise texture, I can control shift and select it to preview it. I want to change the roughness down to a 0.65 instead, so it's not quite as rough. And then the noise texture factor can go into the normal to give it some bump, and I'll control shift and select the principal shader. Now there's some weird shading issues, and that's because I need to convert the black and white data from the noise into normal data here that the shader can use. So I'll go to the add menu and let's search for a bump node and I'll put the bump node between the noise and the principal shader and the factor can go into the height value and that way it'll convert it to actual bump data. 
but then it's way too bumpy and because this is a smooth marble material i want it to be very subtle so i'm going to turn the strength way down to like a 0 0.02 so it is very subtle so that is it for the finished procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group so it's more customizable and easier to control. So let's click and drag to box select all the nodes. I'll press Control G to join it into a node group, and you can hit the tab key with the node group selected to go in and out of the node group. So let's drag the node group over here, and I can make it bigger, and I can copy the material name, and I'm going to paste the material name right in there so it is called Wavy Marble. I'll hit the tab key to go into the node group. I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. You can click on the group tab, and this will give you the interface settings. So I'm going to double click on this, and I'll just rename this to Shader because I like that better. So outside of the node group, it says Shader. So let's go back into the node group. Now over here we have this group input and we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So let's first take the scale and I can plug that into the group input. But if I click on the scale here, it's gonna have three values and I just want one value to control the scale. So on the type here, we're gonna choose float instead. And then on the default value, we'll turn that to one. And then if we go outside of the node group, we wanna turn the scale back to one. So now that can tr control the entire size of the material. So we'll go back into the node group. So I also want to control the noise scale and the wave scale. So we'll drag this over here and we're going to take the noise scale. We'll put that into the extra socket and the wave scale. We'll put that into the extra socket. And up here, if you double click on this to rename them, I'll rename this one to noise scale and I can rename this to wave scale or wavy scale, whatever you want to call it. And then I want to add the colors, so we'll drag the group input right over here. And this one here, this color is just a light color, which is adding the wave, so I'm not going to use that for the color. But color A here, we'll put that into the extra socket. And color B, and then also on this mix here, color B. And then if we click right here to rename them, I'll rename this one to color 1. And then this one here will be color 2. And this one here, color 3. Then I want to add the color hue, so we have this hue value, so we'll put this into the extra socket, and I can double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it to color hue. And if you wanted to, you could add the saturation, which will make it more saturated or more black and white, and also the value, which will make it lighter and darker. I'm not going to add them, but you could definitely add them to the custom node group if you wanted to. Then I want to add some of the detail values, so we'll drag the group input down here by the waves, and I want to plug the detail into the extra socket, and also so the distortion and also the roughness and I can double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to wave detail wave distortion and then the detail roughness I'll rename that to wave roughness and then I want to control the roughness of the material so let's drag this right down here we can put the roughness into the extra socket and then I want to control the bump strength so this bump strength here on the bump node, we can put the strength into the extra socket. And if I double click here to rename this, I want to rename this to bump strength. And then also I want to add the subsurface weight. So we'll put the subsurface into the extra socket there. And if I double click on this to rename it, I like calling it subsurface scattering instead. All right, I'll hit the N key to close the side panel. We can drag the group input right here on the very back. And then I can hit the tab key to go outside the node group. And here's the finished procedural material. So let's just review the final material. So we have the overall scale. We also just have the noise scale and we just have the wave scale. And then we have the different colors. So we have colors one through three. We also have the color hue, which you can easily change the hue. Then we have some cool wave details. So we have the detail, also the distortion, and also the roughness. And by playing around with these values, you can really get some different looking marble. Then we have the roughness of the material, so you can make it a more scratched up or rough marble, or you can make it a super polished and smooth marble. And then we have the bump strength, and then finally we have the subsurface scattering. So that's gonna be it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this finished procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up in the asset browser. And I've created another 10 procedural materials, so I've just released Blender procedural material pack number 19, which come with all of these materials, and all of these new materials have been added to my 
my ultimate blender procedural material pack so all of my existing customers can re-download the product files to get the new updates with the new materials. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. The links are all in the description. But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching.